we begin to talk about matrices on their own in this video. First, we give the formal definition of a matrix. A matrix of size m by n is a rectangular array of m n numbers called entries of the matrix, arranged into m rows and n columns. We use the symbol A subscript ij to denote the entries of a matrix, and it is called the ij entry of the matrix, where i is the row number and j is the column number. Notice that in this notation, the first number i always represents the row number, and j always represents the column number, but not the other way round. We will also denote such a matrix by square bracket aij. There are three types of matrices of special sizes which are worth mentioning. The first one is a matrix of size 1 by n. It is called a row matrix or row vector because it consists of only one row. For example, the matrix 1, 4, negative 2, 3, 7, arranged as a row, is a row matrix of size 1 by 5. The second type is a matrix of size m by 1, and it is called a column matrix or column vector because it has only one column. For example, the matrix with entries 7, negative 2, and 3 arranged as a column is a column matrix of size 3 by 1. The third type is a matrix where the number of rows equals the number of columns, so it has size n by n. It is called a square matrix. For example, this matrix has size 4 by 4. Now, we want to know when two matrices A and B are equal. We say that they are equal, written as A equals B, if and only if they have the same size and the corresponding entries are equal. More precisely, if A is the matrix with entries Aij, and B is the matrix with entries Bij, and they have the same size, then A equals B if and only if Aij equals Bij for all i and j. Let's look at an example. Suppose A, B, and C are the matrices as shown. Notice that A and B have size 2 by 2, but C has size 2 by 3. So A is not equal to C, and B is not equal to C. For A and B, two pairs of corresponding entries are already equal, namely 1 and 0. If we want the matrices to be equal, we require that the other two pairs of corresponding entries are also equal, that is, A equals 2 and B equals negative 1. Now, we talk about operations of matrices. We know that the operations in arithmetic are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So naturally, we'll start with addition of matrices. Let A be the matrix with entries Aij and B with entries Bij have the same size. We define A plus B to be the matrix with entries Aij plus Bij. In other words, to add two matrices, we just need to add their corresponding entries. Note that addition is not defined for matrices of different sizes, mainly because there is no reasonable way to define addition for these matrices. Before talking about subtraction, we have to first introduce scalar multiplication. We let A to be the matrix with entries Aij and K be a real number. We define k times a to be the matrix with entries k times aij. In other words, when we multiply k to the matrix a, we multiply each entry of a by k. Here, k is called a scalar. By convention, we use uppercase letters for matrices and lowercase letters for scalars. This is to avoid confusion with matrix multiplication, which we will introduce at a later stage. Now we will talk about A minus B. Given the definition of matrix addition, it should not be hard to guess the definition of subtraction. Let A be the matrix with entries Aij, and B be the matrix with entries Bij, have the same size. A minus B can be written as A plus negative B, which equals the matrix with entries Aij plus bracket negative the matrix with entries Bij. 
by the definition of scalar multiplication, we can put the negative sign inside the matrix. So we have the matrix with entries aij plus the matrix with entries negative bij. By the definition of matrix addition, this is equal to the matrix with entries aij plus negative bij. Since the operation inside the square bracket is in the real numbers, we can remove the bracket to have the matrix with entries aij minus bij. We can see that if we want to take the difference of two matrices, it means to take the difference of the corresponding entries. Let's look at an example. Suppose A and B are matrices defined as shown. A plus B is the matrix with entries 1, negative 2, 3, 4, plus the matrix with entries 5, negative 7, negative 1, and 0. This equals the matrix with entries 1 plus 5, negative 2 plus negative 7, 3 plus negative 1, and 4 plus 0 which is equal to the matrix with entries 6, negative 9, 2, and 4. Also, 1 half times B is equal to 1 half times the matrix with entries 5, negative 7, negative 1, and 0, which is equal to the matrix with entries 5 halves, negative 7 halves, negative 1 half, and 0. We can also mix matrix addition or subtraction with scalar multiplication. For example, the matrix 2a minus 7b equals the matrix with entries 2, negative 4, 6, 8, minus the matrix with entries 35, negative 49, negative 7, and 0, which is equal to the matrix with entries negative 33, 45, 13, and 8. We finish by proving some properties of matrix addition and scalar multiplication. Let A, B, and C be any n by n matrices. We also let K and P be real numbers. The first property is that A plus B equals B plus A. In other words, matrix addition is commutative, that we can swap the order of the matrices. The second property is that A plus bracket B plus C equals bracket A plus B plus C. In other words, matrix addition is associative. That is, we can choose to add any two matrices first, before adding the others. The third property is that we can find an n by n matrix, denoted by 0 subscript n by n, such that 0 plus A equals A plus 0 equals A. This matrix is called the zero matrix. Note that the subscript m by n is optional, but I choose to show it here, so to avoid confusion with the real number 0, and it can also be used to emphasize the size of the matrix. The fourth property is that we can find an m by n matrix negative A such that A plus negative A equals negative A plus A equals the zero matrix. The fifth property is that k times bracket A plus B equals k times a plus k times b. The sixth property is that bracket k plus p times a equals k times a plus p times a. The seventh property is that bracket k times p times a equals k times bracket p times a. A bright student like yourself would be able to see why these properties are true, but for completeness we will still prove them one by one. First, rewrite A, B, C as matrices with entries A, I, J, B, I, J, and C, I, J, respectively. For the first property, A plus B equals the matrix with entries A, I, J plus B, I, J. Since we can swap the real numbers in addition, this is equal to the matrix with entries B, I, J plus A, I, J. So this is equal to the matrix B plus A. For the second property, A plus bracket B plus C equals the matrix with entries A i j plus the matrix with entries B i j plus C i j. By the definition of matrix addition, we have the matrix with entries A i j plus bracket B i j plus C i j. 
since the order of addition in the real numbers does not matter. This is equal to the matrix with entries bracket AIJ plus BIJ plus CIJ. By the definition of matrix addition, we can break this off into two matrices with entries AIJ plus BIJ and CIJ. So it is equal to bracket A plus B plus C. For the third property, the M by N zero matrix is defined to be the matrix where all its entries are equal to zero. In other words, the IJ entry of the zero matrix is equal to zero for all I and J. Then, A plus the zero matrix equals the matrix with entries AIJ plus zero, which equals the matrix with entries AIJ, which is just A. Also, the zero matrix plus A equals the matrix with entries zero plus AIJ, which is the matrix with entries AIJ, which is again A. For the fourth property, we note that negative A equals negative one times A, so we can put the negative one inside the entries and get the matrix with entries negative one times AIJ, which is equal to the matrix with entries negative AIJ. So, A plus negative A equals the matrix with entries AIJ plus negative AIJ, which is equal to the matrix with entries or equal to zero, which is just the zero matrix. Also, negative A plus A equals the matrix with entries negative AIJ plus AIJ, which is equal to the matrix with entries or equal to zero, and again this is equal to the zero matrix. For the fifth property, K times bracket A plus B equals K times the matrix with entries AIJ plus BIJ, which is equal to the matrix with entries K times bracket AIJ plus BIJ, using the definition of scalar multiplication. Now, the properties of the real numbers tell us that we can multiply the K inside the bracket to get the matrix with entries K times AIJ plus K times BIJ. Now we break it off into two matrices with entries K times AIJ and K times BIJ. By the definition of scalar multiplication, this is equal to K times the matrix with entries AIJ plus K times the matrix with entries BIJ. So it is equal to K times A plus K times B. For the sixth property, bracket K plus P times A equals K plus P times the matrix with entries AIJ. We can put the scalar K plus P inside to get the matrix with entries bracket K plus P times AIJ. By the property of the real numbers, this is equal to the matrix with entries K times AIJ plus P times AIJ. Since we have a sum of entries, we can break it off into two matrices with entries K times AIJ plus P times AIJ, which is equal to K times the matrix with entries AIJ plus P times the matrix with entries AIJ, again using the definition of scalar multiplication. So this is equal to K times A plus P times A. Finally, for the seventh property, bracket K times P times A equals bracket K times P times the matrix with entries AIJ which is equal to the matrix with entries bracket k times p times aij. By the properties of the real numbers, this is equal to the matrix with entries k times bracket p times aij. Now we can take the k outside the matrix to get k times the matrix with entries p times aij. Taking out the scalar again, we get k times bracket p times the matrix with entries aij. So this is indeed equal to k times bracket p times a, and the proof is complete.